Hi everybody! You want to show the full classical model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply in terms of how that model will correct the deflationary gap. Well, let's go through how to construct this quite detailed and technical diagram. We start by labeling the axis. So on the y-axis, label price level. On the x-axis, label real GDP. The way to do this is start with an economy in full equilibrium, in full employment, where you have SRAS and AD labeled like that, but that happens to be also the full employment level of output. Okay, so we can ensure that LRAS goes through that equilibrium too. Label that YFE with a price level of P1. Now we want to show the deflationary gap. How do we show a deflationary gap? Well, remember AD, where AD cuts SRS, is less than the full employment level of output. So what you want to draw is an AD shift to the left from AD1 to AD2, which takes us to Y2 on the diagram. Call it that. And a price level of P2. That's good. And just draw a downward arrow to show that movement there. That's fine. Now we want to show the adjustment. So what happens in the long run in the classical model is that wages adjust, wages are flexible downwards in the long run, which means that SRAS will shift to the right as there are lower costs of production in the economy. And what you need to draw is SRAS shifting to the right where it cuts AD back at this full employment level of output. All right, so a parallel shift of SRAS, a ruler will help here, but that's pretty good. So a parallel shift to the right of SRAS which takes us back to the full employment level of output. So to recap, draw full employment, so equilibrium in the classical model first, shift AD to the left to show the deflationary gap, and then shift SRS to the right to get back to full employment. When you shift SRS to the right, make sure it cuts AD at the full employment level of output. And then we have our new equilibrium, which is a YFE, and with a lower price level of P3. All right, that is done. One extra thing you might want to show, not necessary, but you might want to do it, is when you get to Y2, you might want to label that as your deflationary gap. The reason why you might want to do this is that when you write your analysis, you will then talk about it because you've labeled it on the diagram. Then go through your checklist. All we need to check here is that we label the axis, the curves, and the relevant equilibrium. And we have, there is a lot to label on this diagram, so don't forget your labels. That's how you show the adjustment of a deflationary gap in the classical model. Thanks for watching, guys. See you all in the next video.